Hello folks, I'm back again. I wanted to talk a little bit about my first game of Frostpunk. Uh, someone once asked Tom Vassell, how many times do you have to play something uh, before you review it, before you know if you like it enough to review it? And his answer was, enough. I don't think one time playing through this is really enough for a, a legitimate review, like a real, real review. It's more, so it's, this will be sort of a first impressions but I have spent a lot more time with this game than I have uh, many other games because it is it is extremely heavy, and it was it was it was sheer willpower <laughs> that got me through the rule books and the, and the complexity of this and, and into uh, and onto the table. And but the reward of that seemed to be fairly immense. Uh, so we had a quick little eight-hour session of this last night. <laughs> Myself, Owen, and Justin, uh, another friend of ours from the game store. So Owen and I, when we play, uh, we are, we both take our time and try to figure out what's going on. So it, it, we do take a bit longer. In fact, filming playthroughs and stuff, we, we keep having to remind each other that, that uh, we're playing for camera and not necessarily trying to you know, for the world championship, right? So, so maybe you let go of like the overthinking a little bit in terms of like uh, showing people how mechanics work and stuff. And it's more of a utility when you play online. I don't know if I'll ever do a playthrough for this. In fact, I watched just about every playthrough online that there is. Uh, by, uh, by far, these guys were the best. As far as like overall general instruction and everything, uh, I enjoyed that video the best. And it was it was really, really handy. Uh, there are four guys playing it. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about this. Like, so if you're not familiar, this is based off a video game. And the, the theme of the video game is uh, snowpocalyptic in that uh, the world's going into an ice age. There are these giant generators that have been created uh, that generate heat. They're coal power generators. This kind of takes place uh, uh, a ways back. I think it's like the 8th. Oh, I can't remember now the date. But it's it's very steampunk-esque. It's, it's kind of that time period. And these giant generators were made to, to heat an entire area. So they build them into these craters. So as the game goes on, it gets colder and colder and colder. And, and you're trying to build a civilization around this heat source. Uh, and that means uh, you're building the places they live, the places they, uh, they eat, and the, their means for gathering food and coal and wood and other resources. You've got to develop all of that in a sort of a city builder. Well, exactly a city builder. Uh, city builder survival scenario. These generators were all made by someone else. So you're arriving as part of a refugee group. They've just got this ragtag group of people, of engineers and workers and children. And what you're going to try to do is build a city around here. So you've got to start by kind of clearing the snow away and discovering what resources are around. Uh, so as you do that, these things pop up and you'll have like trees and coal. And as a group, you have to decide what's the best way to take advantage of the resources that we've uncovered. And to help you along, you've all got these citizen cards. So as you play, uh, there's a worker placement element to this. And as you play your people down, uh, you can add these cards in for like a little extra oomph. These are one-time use cards. Everybody gets a few of them to start with. And uh, you can play these down as you're playing workers and kind of and help yourself out a little bit. So that's that's another little boon you have. The whole resource part of this game is uh, is sort of a worker placement element. Uh, the game's divided into what nine phases. And for us, uh, the first time playing this, now I read the rules and uh, and got as boned up on it as I could. And I I felt like I was I was pretty close, but I was still missing some some components because really there's this is a lot to absorb there's a lot of moving parts in this the way the game tries to fix that is uh each player kind of takes a role and if you look through the nine phases of this uh, you can read the role that you have like this is the social advisor so in a bunch of phases the social advisor doesn't do anything and then other phases it jumps in to uh, maintain some upkeep in various different aspects of the game there's also a health advisor that, of course, keeps track of the sickness and, uh, and the food and stuff like that. And we've got a foreman advisor and a generator advisor to kind of help maintain the generator and uh, watch out for the heat. So all these little upkeep things that come that are notorious for these sort of Euro-style games, 
Um, there's a lot of like little dials and things moving all the time. These uh, advisory roles kind of split that responsibility up amongst the four players. Now, if you play that solo, that means you've got four of these sheets, <laughs> but you don't have to use these. Like if you kind of know the game enough, um, you don't really need these, but it really, really helps because there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of moving parts. So it's easy to see that, uh, to miss that, for instance, you didn't make it warm enough. So a couple of people are gonna get really sick and maybe so sick that they'll die, according to the health minister over here, who's very patiently watching the, the, the people get sicker and sicker and sicker, <laughs> and knowing that we're going to have to deal with that. Really, these things aren't very asymmetrical. They do have, each leader has an ability. I don't think we used those leader abilities much at all. Uh, but uh, each of the leaders has an ability that you can use once around to kind of give yourself a little boost if you need it in one direction or another. So all this stuff that I'm showing you so far, it seems kind of worker placement-y, very Euro style. But something else that gets layered onto this game is the theme. And the theme co comes in the form of these uh, dusk and dawn cards. So in the morning, you draw a card and then you read it aloud, uh, something terrible basically. It's, usually it's something weird or something terrible, either something you've got to deal with. Right, so maybe it's something you need to investigate, or uh, some something pops up that you need to deal with it. You'll have a series of options that'll uh, they'll and some of the options that you can pick will be based on uh, how hopeful or discontent you are at the at that moment. But you'll make a decision here, and inevitably another card will go in, and that other card is called a dusk card, and that dusk card will be read at night. So at night you draw one of the dusk cards. And uh, one of those cards, there's usually like four of them in there. Or there's, you know, between two and four of those things, usually. And it comes up, and uh, some decision that you've made on one of those morning cards or some other part of the game uh, will come back, and then you'll get to see what the result of it is. So at some point, uh, that decision you made in the morning will come back. It might not be that night. It might not be uh, the next day. In fact, there's always some form of social dispute that's going on. So there's always going to be something like that happening in the deck. Sometimes you make the right decision and you kind of allocate resources in a certain way or do something that uh, that mitigates the problem and uh, ends up saving the day. Like uh, I believe we, uh, we chose to uh, give some dogs out to some folks. <laughs> like at one point we found some wolves and uh, we gave them to the townsfolk and they ended up helping us find food right when we really needed it. So... That was pretty cool. A lot of story built into these cards. It really makes this game, uh, it really makes it more interesting. It, it also makes it kind of cerebral because it, you've got that, you're really, you're trying to guess what the game's going to do to you. So it, when it presents some scenario to you, and you're trying to guess what the possible outcomes in that. And very rarely did we, well, I think a couple of times we kind of assumed that maybe that was kind of a pain in the ass to, to prepare for so maybe the outcome would be better and that was true uh, but other times we we uh, we went through a little bit of hassle and didn't get much out of it <laughs> in fact sometimes we it ended up being kind of coming back to bite us in a way another thing that you can do that kind of fits with this whole theme uh, and is yet another set of cards are these laws so it has a set of laws and you're able to flip through there and kind of decide which way you want to go. I guess that represents like different uh, voices of authority kind of speaking up for what they think we ought to do. And you could go, you could become real authoritarian or you could become real religious. Um, you can put your kids to work because you've got these kid meeples that basically you just have to keep warm and they do nothing. Or you can invoke child labor and... Um, <laughs> And have them come gather things so you, they can gather wood and coal. The children hunger for the mines. But as you pick a law, you get these set of consequence cards. So the, these two, you get these A and B cards. You're not supposed to look at them, but you pick one of the A and B cards and you throw it in that dust stick. So some night, that law that, uh, that you passed will eventually come back up and you'll see what the result is. Uh, I think ours were that the kids were getting injured at work and people were upset. But it was totally worth it. Sorry, kids. Uh, oh, we also added sawdust to the food. <laughs> we're great. But we won. That's what <laughs> we won. Especially after eight hours, you, you really want to win. That's important. 
So thematically it really works and it's sort of a, it gives you that choose your own adventure vibe where uh, you get to kind of guess at what the game's going to throw at you for the decisions you make. And it's funny because a lot of times um, the decisions you're trying to make will be based off you know real world moralities when really that's kind of out the door especially when you put it on uh, when you're looking at these graphs and you're seeing that uh, many many people are sick and are going to die so uh, you need to feed them. Maybe we add the sawdust. It's just the way it is. Every time you do something bad, there's always a negative consequence, you know, but you sort of gamble it. Maybe it won't be so bad or uh, you'll be able to handle it better if you only you could kind of get ahead a little bit. But getting ahead a little bit is, it seems, uh, it seems impossible at times. Like the, I really thought we were gonna lose all the way through hour six and seven. <laughs> It got later and later at night. I think we were really timid to do things. We were sort of over, maybe overthinking, like we were doing all the math on a whole round and like figuring out basically the whole action phase where we're supposed to take turns putting things down. What we did instead is whoever, we kind of changed it. We, we, try, we did it that way for the first few several rounds. And then what it ended up being is we just kind of did a committee and whoever gets, uh, whoever's turn it was, can kind of have the final say. So whoever has the turn will kind of say, hey, I think we really ought to do this and this and this and this, and everybody just kind of figured out the best way to do that. And that worked out really great. We played it three player, which means somebody had to do two of these. That was me since I read the rule book and watched all the videos and stuff. And, uh, and the, a game like this is tough for me. Uh, reading and retaining uh, information is, is really difficult. Uh, these sheets are, are fantastic, and the concept of splitting this amongst a lot of people is great. Uh, this is very solo, because it's a co-op, it's a solo, it's got solo potential, let me put it that way. If you're in a house by yourself, or you've got a table that you could just kind of dedicate to this, it, it might be kind of interesting, especially with some of the other scenarios to do this solo but there's really there's really so much going on i i think that yeah uh, you've got to really really want it bad i i don't recommend this as a solo game this is just there's just way too much going on uh it, but some people really like that i i just want you to know that before you get committed to it this isn't for the casual uh solo board game <laughs> This is this is a, a sort of the advanced in every way. You even need to consider too that the people that you're playing with, um, they need to have played a few board games before you just kind of bring this in. This will melt uh, melt your brain, or you'll just lose uh, outright because it's it is very difficult. I feel like we were really fortunate. We just kind of barely scraped by. I I guess we didn't do too bad really overall, but. We agonized every, every, over every single decision we made to the point where the game was just unwieldy long. Like, it was super, super long. And uh, part of the end of that was we were just tired. I mean, we literally wrapped up at like 3 in the morning. So by then, we weren't very uh, efficient. Like, <laughs> if we woke up early, you know, super early in the morning and got together and played it, we probably could have wrapped it up with, you know, I'd say at least five hours though. A lot, and that didn't include setup. I, I did all the setup the day before, so there was no setup in that time. And we didn't break it down either. It's still here, set up the next day. Some folks like complain about how long a, a game is. I really don't mind long games. I feel like, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm very much a minority in that. Like, there's very few people I meet that, that are like, oh yeah, I'm down for a super long game. <laughs> so long as it's real thematic and there's a lot of things to keep track of. <laughs> but I blame completely the length of this game on, uh, on it being the very first game that I've played and they've played. We are all new. Uh, and just because I'd read the rules a lot didn't mean a, a hill of beans once you present all of it in real life. I mean, it, it changes quite a bit. A lot of people learn their board games in different ways. Like, uh, I have a lot of trouble sometimes, like, reading a rule book and then visualizing what that's going to be like in real life. I really have to get it out on the table. And a lot of times if I'm playing a new game, even if I'm by myself, I at least pull it out and, and play it. This time I tried to supplement with a whole lot of videos and a whole lot of, uh, of watching other people play and trying to pay real close attention and stuff. That worked for the most part. I also read the rule book. I did read the entire rule book also, but 
uh, I don't have the retention. And, uh, and what, what's funny is watching the videos made reading the rule book kind of possible because I couldn't, uh, when I was reading the rule book, I was relating things I, uh, I read to things I'd seen people do and even like wondered, uh, because I, I, I think I found a rules mistake, at least one or two <laughs> rules mistakes, <laughs> just by going, oh, wait, you know, uh, when I saw them do that, they did something else. Because I remember things uh, visually. But if you're good at going through the rule books and stuff, I will say the way the phases are made it really easy to kind of look things up. And uh, uh, the iconography and stuff was real intuitive. Uh, there's a lot of extra stuff you can buy for this game. Also, uh, there's... Like these, I guess the resin buildings, and there's uh, there's upgraded uh, upgraded components and stuff. I the only thing I got was the mat, uh, and I painted this tower myself. That video's uh, on another video on this channel. I absolutely would not move beyond that before you played your first game. I think you really need to get a sense of like, are you in it? Are you in it to win it on this game? Do you want to play it again? Uh, given that. It's such an event to play this. It's going to be a real, like a really long time and stuff. Uh, I probably wouldn't mind pulling out the buildings. I will say that this game is a table hog. It is huge. I've got a four by four foot table and I just barely had enough room. Uh, if I'd added another person over there where all the resources are on the other side of the table, uh, if I'd had another person sitting over there, uh, all of these corners would be jammed full of different little things, which kind of goes with your advisory roles and stuff. You just put those elements that they control kind of closer to them. But, uh, boy, is it a table hog. It, it, it requires a lot of space. And that's another kind of negative on the solo part. Like, you can't just whip this out real quick and play a solo game. The setup for this, for me, on the first try, the setup for this was about, you know, 30 or 40 minutes. It was uh, quite a bit to pull it out. One thing I want to ding them for too is their insert. Their insert is just stupid. It's, it doesn't work at all. Uh, if you sleeve your cards, you're not going to have really uh, enough room. Uh, there are 3D printed ones and Owen was nice enough. O Owen, who appears on my channel all the time, uh, printed out some uh, tuck boxes for me. It's like I've got like a, I don't know, probably 50 of these. <laughs> What's really cool too is that uh, they have these that hold all the buildings and stuff. So all of my law buildings and everything and then there's a little lid. It just clips right on top of it. So when I put them all away, I can put that lid on and put it away. And next time I go to pull it out, it's all set. So that is, uh, that is uh, if I was going to buy an add-on, like my first add-on, it would probably be that. So I really liked this game. I'm actually looking forward to to the next game of it. I'm, I, I, I'm really curious to see if it takes as long. Uh, I'll definitely plan for it to take a long time, but hopefully uh, maybe if, maybe we can be more decisive and it, it either lose faster or win faster next time. So Justin, who played this game with us yesterday, said it is a great port of the video game. Uh, and said there are a lot of things. They're all kind of simulated in, in different ways here. So if you really liked the video game, and you're super into board games, uh, this is a must have. Uh, if not, really think about it. Uh, for me, I didn't know anything about the video game. It was just pure theme. I was, I'm was i looking at this picture on the front of the box and I'm like, yeah, I wanna hang out there and see what's going on. <laughs> that is admittedly not the best way to uh, make your financial decisions. <laughs> but I did, I, I did a lot of research on this. I kinda knew what I was in for before I picked this up. And uh, I decided I didn't care. I wanted to try it because I can handle a difficult board game, and so can my friends. I, I don't. I I thought I would be pulling this out for solo sessions and stuff. Um, boy, I've got to really have not a lot going on to try to tackle this on my own. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever been unbusy enough to kind of pull all of this out just for me. But if you got a couple of buddies that are really into it and they're down to hang out all night. And it will be all night. I think I, it, most games, like even from people that have played it a few times, it's been like, you know, three or four hours. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you've got a buddy or two or three to come hang out with you and knock this game out in a couple of hours, uh, four or five hours possibly, this might be for you. Might be something you're interested in. But folks, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if Owen and I get a few more sessions of this, maybe he and I will, will make a video together 
Uh, normally we make these videos together, but our session ended so late last night that there was no making a video then. We all went to bed. In fact, when I get done with this, I think I'll go back to bed because uh, it's the next day and I'm very tired. Very tired. But that's all I got for you today. I painted this tower. If you'd like to see that video, uh, there's a link right here. Over there, something the algorithm thinks you like. If you click up here, we can hang out again sometime. I'll see you later. Enjoy your games. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.